How's it going today, my friends? Sorry, I've uh, kind of been gone for a little while. Uh, went through the summer. It's, you know, all this stuff going on. Um, it's kind of slowed things down. Uh, obviously not making quarter what I was on YouTube anymore. So, you know, to invest into new projects isn't going to happen right now. So um, we are going to start a uh, new slingshot uh, gun today. Um, so we're we're about to do that just because I've ordered the materials a long time ago and they finally came in. Um, and I've also been working on a, sorry about the vehicles in behind me here, it's pretty loud. Um, I just finished a new uh, headquarters for the Master MacGyver. Um, I've been waiting for a long time to have a shop. So I ended up selling a four wheeler and turning around and building myself a shop. So I'll give you guys a look here and uh, so this is my new shop. It is 26 feet by 12. Um, this is actually going to be a seven foot roll up door. So uh, it's all steel, steel roof, two by sixes. Um, now it'll be, give me somewhere that I'm going to be able to, uh, all winter long, be able to work in here and continue to do projects. Um, now I'll show you here inside. So yeah, like I said, right here, this is actually going to be a roll-up door. Let me give you a wide angle. There's my son there. Um, so it's just wooden floors. Uh, all the walls uh, have now been insulated with pink insulation. And, you know, that will do for now until I can afford to cover all the walls in here. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a decent sized shop. I can now pull in my big buggy, which is 70 inches wide. I can pull it in here to do work on it. Uh, so this is what I've been doing, is just working away on my new shop to get ready to start making a lot more videos. So winter's coming, don't, be, don't worry, I am coming out with a lot more videos. I've got a ton of ideas coming uh, that have came to me over the last little while that I want to get out and share with you guys. So uh, today we're going to get started on this project. Um, so this is, uh, we're going to use a piece of countertop that I used or got from an old job. So it's uh, about an inch and a half thick, a little over that. I think it's about an inch and five eighths, uh, solid wood. So we're going to cut our gun out of this and I will show you all of the trigger mechanism. This is what I had to order from China that took forever to get here. So. This trigger will be for the uh, for the gun, and then here's the bands. I got the three or six bands. Um, I don't know if this is going to work 100%, but this is what we're going with right now, and then uh, some ammunition for it too. So that's where we're at now. We're going to get set up here with uh, the table saw and everything, and get ready to start cutting this. Uh, get the jigsaw out, and we'll have to probably do a little bit of hand shaping with this too. Um, maybe even use some flap discs. Okay, I've now got it all set up. Um, I just took my 22 pellet gun as a reference. Um, so what I did, uh, it's really hard for you guys to see on this camera, I see. But uh, I just kind of traced out what kind of shape we wanted. And, uh, you know, we'll determine barrel length after we get the right amount of stretch from our uh, slingshot bands. So. First, we're going to cut all this out. We're going to have to bend some metal to do uh, a trigger guard and stuff like that. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of shaping and stuff to get this, you know, looking a lot nicer. So, I will, uh, we're going to take uh, a skill saw here, cut any of the straight lines like the barrel, and then any of the other, uh, you know, tight circumferences and stuff like that, we will do with the jigsaw. So, we'll bring you back here once we got the rough cut out. Okay, we have now got the initial frame, you know, taken out. It's, you know, pretty close match to the 22 that's over there. Uh, or the, yeah, pellet gun still. Um, so we're still going to have to build the Y for the end of it and account for that distance. Um, but right now we're going to start shaping this uh, into, you know, a lot more, you know, comfortable on the hand. But I think actually before we do that, we're going to drill out 
for the trigger and stuff so I know distances so I don't uh, over sand in areas I shouldn't over sand in so uh, yeah so we're gonna get set up on the drill press drill out the center of that to accommodate this and we'll have to use a chisel uh, to have that counter sunk in there a little bit uh, not too much though because these things have to be above the top so once we uh, get something figured out here we'll bring you back okay guys so what I'm using right now is an 80 grit uh, flat disc for my grinder I'm gonna take the bulk of it down there kind of get the rounded shape and then we'll finish off with a palm sander you know and kind of clean up all the areas um, I'm maintaining one inch away from the end here just to keep the strength so I'm gonna taper it out from there uh, that's the goal anyways and you know I'll just kind of take you through me shaping this thing into place or into the shape and as you can see just going to keep working at it and you know continue to get everything smoothed out and you know give it some character in the barrel and yeah we'll bring you back here in a few minutes once i get a little bit more shaping done and maybe we'll uh we'll show you how i'm going to work on the handle okay guys well i've got uh it pretty much all sanded down now um now it does still have a few swirls in it and you know it's not perfect i'm still going to go over it with a uh, hand sandpaper um, I've gone over it with first the flap disc, then I went over it with the random orbiting sander with uh, a 120 grit. So it's still going to need just a fi final sanding, you know, in like some of the areas here. But it's been really shaved down for my thumb on this side so that my thumb fits in there nice. And now when you put it up, it's a nice comfortable distance. Um, the trigger has still got to obviously be put in here, but the hole is drilled for it. And I left the end uh, quite a bit, you know, square still. And what I want to do with that is I'm going to take a piece of this eighth inch. Uh, it's, I think it's around eighth inch thick, uh, maybe just a bit thinner steel. And then I've got this U-bolt and this U-bolt. I'm going to weld a plate across the front of that and it's going to get locked on just like this onto the end and then I'm going to take a hacksaw once I get the the distance I want here I'm gonna smooth everything off and then I'm gonna cut down the center of it and split it open and then on the ends of these they have like little ball bearings inside them so I'm gonna slide that make sure I'm, obviously I'm gonna file it down really well here and then I will slide these all down the channel there and then kind of pinch it off at the top and that will be the end of the slingshot and then it's going to be a matter of taking this you know do final sanding finishing um, i'm going to paint just the end butt stock here that i kind of kind of grooved into the the wood a little bit that's going to be painted black and then everything else is just going to be clear coated because it has so much character in the wood that there's no way i want to lose that so all right guys well I'm going to get you set up here, we're going to use the plasma cutter, the welder, get something welded up for the end here, and we'll uh, look at a way of uh, making sure we get long enough screws to make sure we get a good bond to the end of this, because there's going to be a lot of tension on this rod, so. Okay, I was going to use the uh, plasma cutter to do this, but I haven't got my air all ran over here yet, and to do that it's less more hassle than to just cut this two seconds with a grinder so I'm just gonna cut this quick here and then uh, we'll get the welder hooked up and get this attached to it okay so now that we have that piece off there it's really hot right now so ouch get that there. Yeah, just throw my sleeves on here. 
I use these Lincoln ones. They're great for in the summertime when you don't have a long sleeve shirt on and you don't want to be burnt by all the slag because this is flux core. So now all we're going to do is just put this U-bolt on here. Just like, just like that. And then we're going to weld it all out and then we'll be ready to make all the other cuts and adjustments. There we go. I'm going to clean those welds up there and they should be pretty decent. 40 Easy Welder 140 MP. I am running at uh, 6 on the uh, wire feed and 5 and a quarter or 5 and a half on the power. I always run about half, half more wire than I do voltage or amps. Um, and I find I get the right amount of fill with that and yeah it seems to work out a lot better and like show you here in a second and as you can see it gives you a decent weld uh, there's a little bit of ferocity in that weld there but uh, I'm gonna go over anything just to strengthen it. I'm gonna cool it down a little bit all right now that's cooled down a little bit uh, I can see I want to add a little bit more to the bottom here and then I'll take the uh, Take the flat disc and clean everything up and we will uh, be ready to start uh, you know cleaning all this up slicing the lines in and all of that so let me finish this weld up now that we have this welded on to here now that will get attached right to the front and I'm going to smooth off all of this so that it looks nice and smooth now with the flap disc and yeah away we go. Okay, now I've got this piece here to go on and I just need to drill the holes now and cut down these uh, pieces here so I know where it's going to line up and everything but I need to uh, get it on there excuse me and uh, and test everything first before I know determine how long I want to keep the okay so now I've got the gun clamped here in the vise. This plate's ready to go on. I've now cut little slots down with the grinder here and then once I get those bands in there I've also taken a little pin file here. Just a little pin, flat pin file. Filed all the edges off so nothing's sharp here anymore. So now I can take this and I'm using one big long leg bolt because once it's on here it can't go anywhere because it's cupped along the bottom of the metal here so there's no way for it to spin so we're gonna put this bolt in here kind of get this thing set well put together other than uh, you know maybe uh, well I guess we will get the trigger set into and then I gotta get a trigger guard built for it so we need to find a piece of metal I think actually I can cut a chunk off of that and we'll use that and form it into a trigger guard uh, and then other than that 
it will be ready to be disassembled once and then we will uh, paint it and get it ready for its first test shooting. So kind of exciting. Looking forward to this. It's been a lot of work. It's, I've got about six hours of work into this now. So there we go. That's done. Now that's locked on there. Now you can see how that's going to be my where the the actual uh, green parts of the bands fit in. So they will all lock inside there. Then I'll pinch off the end or maybe even just wrap a little bit of wire. I'm not 100% sure yet. Just kind of winging this. And I guess next we'll get the handle installed on here or the trigger. Okay, we got these little ball bearings specifically for uh, slingshots. So you're going to stick that little ball right inside the little pocket there. And then you just pull it back and slide it in between the trigger. So just like so. And now the trigger, there is no safety on this. So that trigger is hot. So you got to be careful where you point it just like any other gun. So I'm going to sit back here. We're going to shoot it at this cardboard box and let's see if we can get any kind of penetration it may just bounce off i'm not 100 percent sure this is uh these aren't the highest uh strength bands you can get but uh you know for somewhere to start we'll see how this goes and we can always increase them so i'm gonna go sit back here and uh let's see if we can shoot through this cardboard box five four three two one go Holy, it shot right through it. There it is. Right through that cardboard box, like butter. So that is pretty simple to build. We built it in an afternoon. I still do have to build the trigger guard. Um, so once I get that done and we get it all refinished, we'll uh, take it out and we'll shoot a few things. So we'll bring you back when we get to that point. Okay guys, I worked away here for a little while and I just found a piece of scrap metal, flat stock, and bent it into a trigger guard. So I just grinded down the ends to get it nice and round, smooth. And then I countersunk the screws here too so they're flush with the metal. And now it's ready for final sand. And I, we've obviously shot it a few times here, you've seen. So we're going to do the butt stock just here at the end is going to be black and then the rest is just going to be varathane and i'm not going to sand it perfect i'm going to sand it you know i'm going to leave some of the imperfections in it i don't want it to look like you know it came out of a stamp like this is handmade so i don't mind that it has some of those characteristics then i need to take off the end here take this off take this off paint them all um, i think i might leave this uh silver the way it is or i may paint it black i'm not sure yet so that's my next thing to do is to now take this thing apart, give it a final sand, and then we will uh, set up and do a few more shots with it, and we'll take an overall look. Now, through testing, I found, um, like, these are the way it comes, you know, obviously with no knots in it, and it's just not enough power. These bands aren't, ex you know, exceptionally strong to pull back, so I am going to have to upgrade to a different kind of... Um, strap on here so or bungee cord whatever you want to call it and then we'll be able to get the power that I'm getting out of this if I when I tied all these knots in these just to put some extra tension on them I was able to get uh, those um, little metal balls to go right through a cardboard box so to go through the front through the air in the center and then back through the other side that's a uh, got to be a decent amount of force so um, if you guys know of any uh, good ones that are out there, feel free to leave a message in the, the comments and I will take a look at it. You know, if you can find a link to Amazon, I am in Canada, so if you can find that link, um, that would be greatly appreciated. So, alright, I will bring you guys back here once we got this stripped down and I'll show you what we're going to varnish and paint it with. Okay guys, I've got uh, first coat of lacquer on there. I'm just using a clear coat. This is what I'm using. 
dries really fast and I'm sanding with uh, like about a 600 grit in between coats. I will be. Uh, so this is just first coat. I painted just the tailstock black there and I've got the other pieces here just drying and they all got painted. So next I'm just going to go through the steps of getting all this coated and get probably about five or six coats of varathane on here and that should help protect it for many years to come because I'm sure my son's going to play with this a lot. Okay, so I got everything laid out here, all the screws, everything we need um, to get this thing reassembled. I've, uh, well, I guess I need these too. So I've got everything here to reassemble this gun other than I guess I need the bands too. So here are the bands once again. So I'll probably uh, speed this up so you guys don't have to sit through it at real time speed, but uh, I'm going to reassemble this and then we'll uh, take a few shots at it. I've got it all clear gloss now on there, nice and smooth. Uh, I think it turned out beautifully. It's comfortable in your hand, doesn't weigh too much, but has enough weight. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed with it. So here we go. I'm gonna Okay, and anybody that wanted to see this closer, there you are. It uh, has some Chinese writing on it. I got uh, it on eBay. Um, that was the only place I was able to find this little linkage um, or trigger, you wanna, whatever you want to call it. So when you, it has pressure on it and you pull the trigger, it splits open and that's, that's how it works. Now if you pull the trigger, nothing's going to happen because obviously it has to have pressure against it and then it will work just fine. So. All right, okay. That part's back on there. Now I am going to take some black paint and just touch up around the end of this hole. But it's kind of hard to put it in and not uh, strip any of the paint off it. But no big deal. Just two seconds to touch that up. But I'll do that off camera. So now the gun is essentially fully assembled other than, and because I used a U-bolt on the front here, it kind of gives a flat area. So the gun will sit by itself up and down. So, and then these, are just going to slide into these. Now remember I used a needle uh, file to file down the inside of this so that it wasn't sharp enough to cut the... And there you go. Now it's fully assembled. You lock it back just like so. So maybe I'll load it here real quick for you and then we'll set up and we'll do a few shots and maybe we'll find some interesting stuff to shoot. So once again, this is what I'm using for shot. Just little ball bearings. They work great for this size of pocket and this size of uh, trigger here. So you just put it in the pocket right at the back, pull it back, and then just slide it in. Now be very careful. I would recommend never using this indoors because if you're loading this, and your fingers let go of that strap it's going to shoot that ball bearing across and you could shoot out a window or shoot somebody hopefully you're smart enough to keep the gun not aimed at anybody but some people are careless let's be real so that's what it looks like fully loaded and revision and you should be good to go so i will put uh, links in the description to as much of the parts that i uh, used i can find now i'm not sure if they sell this so i may put a link to ebay just to help you guys out to be able to find this. Um, now, if I can't, you just go on eBay, search, uh, what did I search? Uh, slingshot Trigger, I think is what it was called. Something like that, but check that out. And uh, yeah, all right, let's get something set up here and we'll uh, take a few shots. Okay, we got uh, first up here is we've got a overripe, um, 
bell pepper and the other one is a green tomato off of our plant that we have thousands of tomatoes on so um, first we're gonna shoot the pepper we're gonna see what happens there now I did put the box in behind there just in case it goes through it's not gonna ricochet it'll just stay inside the box um, and then we'll take a few shots at it and see what happens Okay guys, went right in through that pepper and out the other side. So now remember this is pretty soft, so let's uh let's uh right through that tomato, split it right in half. Went through there like butter. So yeah, you can tell it has enough power. Obviously my aim's off a little bit. I hit it kind of on the side. But, you know, it's not going to make things explode. But if you hit a rabbit or, you know, maybe a squirrel. Okay, guys. Well, there you go. The gun is now complete. Ready for my son to use it. Uh, now, other things you could consider. Well, if you're going to build one of these is maybe make the length of the barrel uh, a little bit longer than I did. Um, I set it kind of up for this because my son's young and I don't want him to be putting a ton of pressure behind this thing and end up breaking something, hurting somebody or something, you know, any of the above. So I uh, kept the barrel short. Um, now you could just get stronger bands obviously and that would increase it. But for right now I'm going to use these ones. They'll be good enough for him and he'll have a lot of fun playing with it. I want to say thank you to everybody for checking out my video, checking out my channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And we have lots of other videos coming. I apologize to anybody that's been watching for a long time. I still haven't got the dune buggy uh, final drive out yet. Um, I had a couple of issues that I had to resolve. And now I just need to get it out and get some filming done. And I've got about half of it filmed for you guys. So... That will be coming back. There's also going to be some more uh, go-kart uh, builds happening over the winter now that I have the new shop. Um, and lots of other exciting stuff coming. So, uh, like I said, please subscribe and like if you uh, enjoyed the video. We'll talk to everybody soon.